In chapter four of your book, it's called Official Terrorism, the State of Man. So um, that is state terrorism. Right. And um, you describe how states use terrorism, usually under the euphemism of security. And that chapter goes up to the late 1980s. Um, And so really, I I suppose the question, and you've partly answered this already, is what did state terrorism consist of then? And did it die away? And did it make a difference when women gained positions in the security hierarchy, such as Madeleine Albright and Hillary Clinton as secretaries of state in the US? Madeleine, no, but Hillary, yes. Um, Because Hillary... Uh, the, the, one of Valerie Hudson's other books, this is the scholar of the University of Texas, is called The Hillary Doctrine. Um, and it shows how she didn't just go to Beijing and make this statement about female, you know, feminist rights or human rights, but how she enacted it as secretary. Kerry did not carry this on. John Kerry did not. No secretary of state has reenacted this. But in fact, she has followed the Harper, the, the, the Valerie Hudson model, which is that you can trace the violence of a country internally and externally directly in line with the way it treats its women. So when you have a high rate of rape, you, when you have a high rate of, of aggressive action of any sort, and when, and when you have a low rate, it declines. Um, uh, So the kinds of things that she instituted in various countries that empowered women and got them into state legislatures and got them into, that is, state legislators, um, and got them into positions of relative power in whether it was in private business or whether it was in government business, were extraordinary and were all done very much undercover or quietly, just quietly, because she couldn't afford being a woman to be that public. So we, we missed that very much. Um, and we were crushed when she didn't win, obviously, not, not only because of he won, but um, uh, I, I think that's a real difference. At Madeline was, I interviewed Albright at one point and, and, and she, she said these things. And then she said, if you quote me, I'll deny it. So I couldn't print them. But Hillary uh, just did them quietly and then was willing to be quoted on them. It's just that she did them very quietly and very sort of under the cover. But, you know, she didn't hide them. But nobody took her seriously about them because they were for just women. They made a difference. They made a huge difference. Uh, And I wish they hadn't been undone. I'm happy to hear that. Um, But I think there is this a problem that with the with the idea that when women get into positions within politics and so on, things will change. Because I'm just thinking about what's happening in the UK at the moment, which is we have quite a lot of women MPs. But at this moment, there's a tremendous distress amongst women because men are doing things like washing pornography on their mobile phones in the Commons chamber in front of them. 56 MPs, including three members of the cabinet, are now under investigation for sexual harassment of women in the parliament. And Mm. some women are actually saying, look, we thought it would make a difference. We all got in there and we thought it would make a difference but in terms of the men's behavior, they may be even worse because the women are there and they resent it so much. So it's- Well, a- you, know, you know, I mean, I understand completely where you're coming from. Uh, and, and in fact, Britain gave us our first example on a world scale with Thatcher of everybody saying, so is this what you meant by women getting power? Which of course was not what we meant. Um, and all I can answer for that, I'm, you know, Sheila, and I don't know that it's an answer, but it's the best I can give. Is, and I think it's true, is that it takes a long time. But it does, it's incremental. And I don't know, that said, I don't know if we have that time, given the planet state. You know, there's the problem. We, we had the time before, but we don't have the time now. So you've got those two blasphemy and transcendence outracing each other to the same summit. And I don't know who gets there first. Uh, and I have to be honest about that. It's not that I'm a Pollyanna. I'm really very bleak and you can see it in my poems. <laughs> uh, but I do think that the species, the human species has this characteristic, which is that we do learn. We, 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 we absorb and we appropriate. Um, we're sort of like the Borg in, in Star Trek, if anybody's or any Trekkies are listening. Uh, we, but we, we adapt. That's the main word I'm looking for. 
And our adaptability is a major characteristic of this species. Always at the last minute, which is a little nervous making, but we do adapt. And if that's the case, I still hold out hope. The other thing is, of course, why not hold out hope? Because if it's going to blow up in front of our eyes anyway, you know, it'll do that anyway. Whereas at least to fight it till the end is a bonny thing to do. And we might, we might as well opt for that.